Hi everyone, welcome to Rebel Bases Dioramas. Today I'm going to be customising and modifying this KX droid. I've had this one a while, I have been unsure what to do with it. I've done pieces before, I did a Knight of a Thousand Tears piece a while ago, but I really love these figures, they're really really nicely detailed, uh, nicely articulated as well. And I'm probably going to add a few bits on there as well. I do have this bag of accessories. I've got loads of guns in here. I've got loads of bits and bobs to add on there as well. So we'll see what we can do. So I've managed to find a flamethrower with a pack, which I think was from a resistance flame trooper. That might going to be pretty cool to put on there. Um, I'll probably paint that up as well. Just add a bit more detail. And I found this little guy. I'm not sure what this is from, but I'm going to add this on as like a little companion droid to go with the main droid. And I've also got all these sprues from various different Airfix and Revell sets. So I'll probably cut a few bits off here and see what we can add on to the main character. I'm going to add some colour to the droid and I'm going to start off with this white, the black and white with a really nice contrast. This is just Humbrol acrylic paint. And I'm also going to use this orange. I have no idea where I've got this from, but this is a really, really bright orange. I think it's going to be a really nice contrast with the white and the black together as well. So the first thing you want to do is give the figure a good wash, warm water, a bit of washing up liquid and a toothbrush, just give it a good scrub, get rid of any residue that might be on there. I'm going to paint the shoulders, I'm going to paint the chest, I might even paint some of the legs. Just pick out some of the really nice detail that's in there because this figure is all black, you don't really see a lot of the detail. Just got a bog basic paintbrush, this doesn't need to be anything fancy at all and we're going to start by covering up his chest. I've painted the chest plate and the back plate. I've given it two coats, but this doesn't need to be fancy because we're going to dirty it up later with some weathering. So I've painted one of the legs, the shoulder panel, and one of the other legs white. As we know from the Star Wars universe, nothing is ever symmetrical. So I didn't want to go full white with the whole thing, so I've left it a bit of a contrast. I think it looks really nice, and the white has really picked up a lot of the detail. I think I'm gonna paint the shoulder pad here orange. I might add some orange into the shins as well. I've also got these little parts that I pulled off the sprues. I'm pretty happy with how it's looking so far and now we can move on to the orange sections of the droid. So I've painted the shoulder and the shin panels of the droid, this really nice orange color. I'm gonna do some parts of the flame pack as well just to show that they are part of the same figure. This is looking really nice already. The orange, the black and the white are a really nice contrast. And you can see here I've added some detail into the flame pack as well with the same orange, black and white colour in there as well. I've also found this little piece which I've painted orange and I'm going to stick to the back of the flamethrower as a little accessory. To add even more detail, I'm going to go in with this Humbrol silver acrylic paint as well on just on the edges of the droid. Give it a good shake, make sure that's completely mixed up. And I'm going to use this on some of the black areas just to pick out a few of the highlights. Again, this doesn't need to be a fancy brush, just something with a point to it. Taking the very, very smallest amount and just adding a few little bits here and there onto the arm first and then onto the main body and as you can see it just picks out that small amount of detail now we're going to use this is just bog basic super glue i'm going to use that to stick these little sprue pieces i think they were the backs of some bombs from a world war ii bomber but just stuck those on with like little extra elbow parts, so that might be quite cool. Now if you want to, you can just stick these on with your fingers, but if you want to be really, really careful, you can use some little tweezers like this. Although sometimes you don't always have the most amount of control, as you can see. Uh, so I'm just go stick that on there with the super glue, hold it in place, and it should dry fairly quickly. I'm really quite happy with how it's looking so far. I've glued onto the uh, pack on the back there as well. And now I'm just gonna add some dirt and some weathering to really make it pop. 
All right, now we've got to get them nice and dirty. As we know, nothing in the Star Wars universe is nice and clean. So we're just going to start off with this nice simple tub and we're going to use these chalk pastels. Now you can get weathering powder, but I find this is a really, really good technique. So we're just going to take this really dark brown one with a nice, uh, you can see where I've already scratched away at it. It's a nice dark brown. Just going to take our craft knife and scratch away so we get some nice fine powder. Scratch it into this little uh, lid, this tub, and then all we're going to do is add a little bit of water into there. And there we go. Just a small amount. You don't need a huge amount for this. Like I say, all we're going to do is get our paintbrush, tiny, tiny little bit of water on there, and we're going to start just covering all the white areas here in this really dirty, murky colour. We're going to get that all in there, in all those nooks and crannies all over these white parts so the dirt sits in all those little crevices and nooks in there as well. Just carry on going until you've got the whole thing covered, all the legs, all the arms. Uh, make sure you get it into all those little crevices. While I'm doing this I can tell you about some of the people that have inspired me to start this channel. Uh, head over to YouTube and check out Boy Lie Hobby Time, check out Luke Towen, check out Night Shift, check out Black Magic Craft as well, all absolutely amazing creators. So we've got all those pieces covered up there, so we're just going to take our tissue, dab off any excess that might be in there, and what you're doing is just taking off that surface layer, and what's going to happen is that chalky water is going to sit in all those recesses and create a really dirty look to the piece. I'm just going back in here with another layer of the chalk and water just to add another layer of dirt in there because I don't think it's quite taken enough. So I um, added a bit more chalk, a little less water. I'm just going to dirty up this leg again and then pull it all back again and hopefully this time should end up with a nice effect, a nice weathered effect on here. And this doesn't work just on obviously droids if you're painting a ship, a spaceship, painting anything really. Uh, if you uh, do any of your own models, any boats, there we go, that's much better. Boats, cars, tanks, tanks it works really really nicely on. Uh, old aeroplanes, so like I say if you're doing any sort of weathering like this, this is a really really nice technique to use. Just got to make sure I get that uh, backpack done as well. I'm going to just take those layers off, just dab it, wipe it, whatever it is you want to do with it. If you wipe it, you're going to end up with more streaks. If you dab it, uh, you're going to end up with more blotchy patterns. And obviously you don't have to use brown if you don't want to. You could use black, you could use green, you could even use blue if you wanted to. Just to add, it depends on what planets you want to imagine your droid is on. Or character whoever it happens to be and like I say this doesn't just apply to droids or machinery if you've got a humanoid character they've got like a backpack or a gun or any sort of clothing that you want to make look a little bit worn or weathered that piece has just come loose damn I have to glue that back on again later any sort yeah there it goes Put glue that back on in a little while so here we go, here's the finished model. I'm really, really happy with how this has come out. The dirt on there sitting really nicely in the backpack and in the leg. I think it just adds so much more character. We're on the home stretch now, so we're gonna make a base out of this little plaque that I got. I think I got this in a, in a pack from the range. First thing we're gonna put down is this Vallejo Thick Mud. This is one of my favorite things to work with. Uh, obviously it starts off liquid and then dries very, very solid very hard. I do think this has got some kind of glue in it because uh, obviously you can stick it down but it does dry really really nicely as well. So you just uh, slap that on there. This is just a coffee stirrer that I may or may have not acquired from a local coffee shop. I'm not going to say. Uh, so just uh, slap that on there nice and thick. You can get this from most model shops and if you're struggling to find it um, possibly visit Amazon. You can find it on there. So we've got the whole thing covered now, just going to add a few extra details in there just to give it a bit more character. So I've got here this big bag of stones which was very kindly given to me by my mother-in-law. I uh, don't know, what's that? Little cork, alright then. Get rid of that. 
but we're going to get uh, a couple of stones. Now, real stones work really, really nicely. They're very, very lightweight. So I'm just going to get a couple of those. Five, three or five odd numbers always work best for this kind of thing. Just stick those down into the mud. And like I say, once it's dry, they will stick in there nicely and won't move around. The next thing we're going to put on is some foliage. This I did actually get from uh, World War Gaming. It's a really, really good place to get um, grass and tufts and things like that. And these are sticky back tufts. So I'll go for these, some of these longer ones here. Uh, it's like a bit of a marshland. You can just peel these off. Stick them down. Like that. There we go. And this will... Just add a bit more character. There we go. And then the final thing, I've got this grass here. I've had this absolutely years, but I'm just going to sprinkle this on. There we go. Just to add a bit of moss and that kind of thing that grows in this sort of marshland. And again, just another layer. And put that all on now. Let the whole thing dry and take a look at it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back next week with a brand new build.